action will connect you to the heart of God. Don't you want to be connected to the heart of God? Yes. And uh, uh, there's things sometimes that happen in our life to try to silence our love for God and our calling. And, uh, and those things have to do also with our passion. When people are cold, they're not in love with God, their spiritual life goes down the drain. Amen. And so uh, we're going to learn about this and we're going to learn about life, life journey. And uh, uh, we also have in life uh, a purpose. All of us, we have, uh, have a purpose in life. So, and in order to uh, attain or to achieve that purpose, we need to apply passion. So, l let's, let's just uh, start and we're going to uh, uh, start with the, our first verse. And uh, I'd like to read this from the New Living Translation. So, please pay attention to this verse. This verse is very important to understand the whole message of today. It says, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. So how many of you know God? Okay, some of you. The other ones, if you don't know Him, it's very easy. You don't even need to go to, to the Bible or to the New Testament, Old Testament, because the hand of God is everywhere. I know there are some scientists that want to tell us that it's not, but eventually, as they learn more of their own science, they will recognize that there is something. Even, you know, the, the, the man that has the highest IQ now, I believe one day he will recognize that there is a creator, there's someone that created all things. So what the Bible is saying here is that through the things that we see, we can get to know God. All right? So don't, don't forget this verse. So through everything God made, we can clearly see what? And what does the Bible verse says? His invisible qualities. So there's, there's uh, things, there's invisible qualities that God has. And let me tell you, God prepared those invisible qualities for you and me. The Bible says that He wants to bless us with His invisible gifts, with His invisible things. So in order to understand His invisible qualities, we better keep our eyes open. And we're going to do that today. Now... I'm going to show you a little movie, and it's, uh, hopefully it's going to start running there. How many of, how many of you know that the, the earth goes around the sun? Okay? So you see, uh, the, here it's a, it's a bit dark, but uh, you see there's the sun in the middle. You see the planets going around. Now, if I tell you that the earth is not really doing circles around the sun, will you believe me? Huh? Well, but the reality... You see, it, in fact, the sun is going out through space at 240 kilometers per second. And you see those are the planets following the sun over there? You see it over there? So the big ball, it's the sun, and you see the planets, they're spinning, and they're following the sun through space at 240 kil kilometers per second. So, in fact, if you see the, the, the solar system from the outside, you won't see a static sun and the planets going around. You will see something like this. The sun going and the earth just spinning like this around the sun. So if you've learned in school that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the earth spins around the sun, I'm not telling you that's completely wrong, but that's not uh, exactly the truth, depending on the perspective. And I better... Be very careful with what I say because there's someone here that knows about space a lot more than me. <laughs> You're laughing at me. <laughs> but uh, but so, so here you see the sun going through space and the planets go like this. Why, why am I showing you this? Remember the Bible verse that we've read? That through the, the things we see, we can see the invisible hand of God and the things of God. So if you, if you look at Earth in 2D, you have... Uh, like a, a, a big uh, sphere, uh, which is the sun, and the planets just doing, a, it's not a circle, it's, it's an elliptical um, movement around the sun. 
So if you see in 2D. But if you see from the outside, if you see it in 3D, in fact, the Earth is not circling around the sun. It's doing a movement like you've seen over there. It's, like, it's going like this. You're getting this? Okay. I hope you, you'll get to something with what, I, what I'm saying. So in light of this, uh, think about Romans 121. And I'd like to show you something about your spiritual journey. Let me just, uh, so you'll understand where I'm going with this, let me just read also a verse in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. And th these are two different translations that you see there. It, it, it says, it is he who sits above the circle, or the globe of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who uh, stretches out to heavens uh, like a curtain, and spread them like a tent to dwell in. Uh, now, in another translation, it says, God sits on his throne. He sits above the, the circle, the horizon of the earth. And compared to him, its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the skies like a piece of cloth, a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to sit under or live in. So, uh, there's some people that said, oh, you know, uh, r religious people, they, they just believe, you know, that the earth was flat and... Uh, they believed all these things, and, and then science brought the knowledge that, in fact, the Earth is a circle, and it's a globe, and it's not exactly like this. Well, they don't read the Bible, those people that uh, affirm those things. Because Isaiah, that lived centuries uh, before Christ, uh, he, he said that the Earth is a globe. So, so uh, God created the Earth. So, as we understand God's creation, we'll understand also a little bit more about ourselves. Now, more and more uh, scientists today talk about the fabric of the cosmos. And uh, I know it's a bit dark there, but that's the Milky Way. And over there, and you see all, all this uh, uh, wonderful space. Um, we had to turn off the lights a little bit in order to dim it so you could see. But remember, he stretches out the skies like what? Like a piece of cloth. So now scientists are talking about the fabric of the cosmos. So, so guess what? The, the Bible already has all, all this knowledge there. You just need to find it. So science doesn't contradict religion, and religion shouldn't contradict science. But contrary to some traditional scientists that say that we are just obtuse because we're Christian, and we don't think, and we're just square, and religion is, is for the middle-aged people, uh, not only middle-aged in age, but the middle ages too. So, so, so they have all sorts of, of uh, insults that, that, uh, to, to talk against, against the, 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 the Bible and all these things. But guess what? When you go to the Bible, you find amazing things. Now let's talk about our life. So uh, when, when you go to a cemetery, and you see the names of people engraved, what do you see there? The dates. The dates, okay? So you, you see date of birth and date of death. So uh, there's birth and then there's death. And in between, there's your life journey. And usually people will represent your life like this. Uh, but today I'd like to introduce you to a different journey. Your journey with God. So it will help you to understand why sometimes we have moments that are enlightened moments, moments of passion, and sometimes we have moments which we are cold, or we want to run away from the world, or we might even want to die, or we want to just to get drunk or take drugs or whatever. And we have these moments, and we don't understand them very well. So if someone told you that it's birth, birth, and then death, and in between, you have your, your, your life like a straight line. i like to introduce you to a different concept. Now, uh, we, our galaxy uh, is supposed to be a spiral. So, you see that there? It's, it's, it's how our galaxy is supposed to be if you see the, out, the galaxy from the outside. And guess what? God sees it from the outside. He created all things. And planet Earth is around, you know, here, this lower part of this galaxy, that it's a, a spiral. And you know what, when the scientists are studying now different dimensions and they study time, 
they concluded also there's some kind of a spiral related with time. I'm not going to go into this today. But, but even if when you pour water in the sink, it does a spiral too. So, so there's, there's, this is a, a movement of, of creation. You know, even DNA, let me go back here, even DNA, it's supposed to be elliptical and spiral. So how would you just want to see your life like birth, death, and then a straight line between your birth and your death? It's not quite like this. So our life, it's more like a spiral. So our life journey, it's more like a, a spiral. Okay? So, and now in, instead of, of life and death, let me introduce you to passion and to something very important, which is purpose. So we, we all have a purpose. God created us with a purpose. There's a purpose in your life. You're not here just to breathe and, and just, you know, to, to be happy and have children. There's a purpose in your life. God created you and He meant something special when He created you. So uh, then he, he, he built in a process in our life, in your life, it's called passion. So passion will help us to travel uh, to our purpose. So we, only with passion. But as life is a spiral, what happens in this process is that there are some events that will try to push us away from our purpose. So, so we, we're drifting through life and we receive information we, we study, there's uh, things that happen in our life, uh, uh, an accident, a disease, we've met someone that we shouldn't, so things happen to our life, and as we go through life and see your life like you're, you're spiraling to your purpose, not to death, but to your purpose, and there's all these things that try to push you away. Now, what happens is, is that you can waste your potential. So when you, you're away from your passion, when you don't pursue your purpose, you can waste your potential. And when there's a perfect alignment between passion and purpose, you're a very successful person. You feel complete. You feel really complete. You know, some people try to achieve this in, a, in an artificial way. Let me give you an example. How many of you did yoga? or Zen or something. None of you? No. Meditation? I, I did it before I was a, 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 a Christian. And uh, something that I've learned was to try to control my emotions, sometimes even my own body, through meditation, in order to uh, achieve a state of, of peace or a state of, uh, well, it's called an, a state of nirvana, a state of... Uh, you know, a, a, a superior state. So, so in many religions, we'll try to teach you this. Now here, we're not trying to teach you religion, but I want to teach you the Word of God. So, when we, uh, also when we drift away from our goals, and when we have storms in our life, we kind of lose track of where we're going. And you, right now, you may be wasting your life. You may be wasting your life. I've seen people with amazing talents. And, uh, and sometimes I see those talents being lost. And I think, what a talent. What a talent, what a waste. For this person doing this, it, they should be doing something else, something different. Now, it's easy for us when we're from the outside and we can see this happening in others. How about your own life? Don't waste your potential. Now, in order to return to our, you know, remember that spin and there are things that try to catapult us out of uh, our purpose. In order to keep in track, there's something, it's called the ultimate passion. And uh, uh, let me read this passage in Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 38. It says, but when the Pharisees heard that he, Jesus, had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, guess what, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Now, you know lawyers are good asking quest tricky questions, eh? So, here's the, the question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? So, this is a very tricky question. Done by a, a lawyer. Do you think the lawyer will know the law? 
Of course. So he's trying to beat Jesus in his own field. And whatever he's going to answer, he knows because this is a, it's, it's like a trap. He wants to catch Jesus. But Jesus goes one step further and silences him by giving him this answer. He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. I'm not going to teach you what happened after. But when Jesus establishes this principle, what do you see in verse 37? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What do you see here? Passion. Passion. So, so Jesus is saying that the, the greatest thing, you know, the, the commandment that is above all, you need to have passion for God. Now, how can I have passion for God if I don't know God? How can I have passion for Him if I was never introduced to Him? Or if I see God just as a, a thing in history? If I see God just as extremism in different religions? Because we see so many wrong things being done in the name of God. We see the, you know, in history, the crusaders killing uh, the, the Muslims in the name of Jesus. Killing witches in the name of Jesus. And we see the, you know what, today it's called Islamic terrorism. Uh, you know, also people with extreme religious beliefs that they do all sorts of wrong things. So that, that will kind of cripple our perception of who God really is. So how can I love God this way? With passion. I need to have an encounter with Him. It's not by, uh, you know, learning from a book. It's not a lecture. You need to have a, a, a relationship with God. And Jesus says, this is the first thing. Because when we love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, we will have purpose and we'll never be disappointed. So today, take time. Take a moment of your life right now. Imagine that instead of being seated there, you're sitting in that beautiful place over there. And think about your passion and your purpose. Are you living your passion? Are you living your purpose? And, and many times in life, we, we're frustrated. Come on, we're frustrated with life, with life. We think, you know, I don't like what I'm doing. You know, I, I, I'm not supposed to, to have this work. I'm not supposed to do this thing. I'm not supposed to do that thing. And, you know, the, the reason why we come to church, it's also to have guidance. Imagine, you know, you remember that th those planets going through space and just following uh, the sun. Imagine if a planet will lose orbit. What, what do you think it will happen to that planet? And you might say, uh, no, a planet cannot lose orbit. Well, something can happen. Something can happen. I was uh, uh, reading uh, on, the, on the internet that scientists are asking for suggestions if an asteroid collides with, uh, with Earth. And, uh, and my suggestion is called Bruce Willis. You will know exactly what to do. <laughs> but, but, uh, but if a planet leaves the solar system, guess what happens? The sun will continue to go. The other planets will continue to go. But that planet will lose its purpose. So it's, it's easy for us, if we lose track of God, I'm not, I'm not uh, telling that God is the sun, but, um, the, but if you lose track of, of God, of your love for God, you will lose life. You will lose your journey. You know, one day our journey is going to come to an end. You know that. And I'm telling you, no, it's not. No, it's not. Because one day, guess what? The earth will also disappear. These planets that you see here, going through space, they will also disappear. But the one who created the universe, he is forever. So we need to gravitate 
and to get our orbit straight around our God and, and see things in a different perspective. Now, I'd like to open up your mind a little bit today so you'll be able to think about your own life, your own purpose. Because it's not about being born and then dying and in between you have your journey. It's far more than this. And, uh, and when I, I see, you know, this image, and, I, and, and if you go to the internet, you, you'll have a, a brighter uh, version of this, uh, of this uh, movie when we post it online. But think about your, your life as following God. And sometimes you go left, you go right, things don't go the way they should. But you need to keep following the one who gave his only son to save you. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm going to finish this message, but I, I want to, to set some, uh, some principles here with you. It says, Of old you've laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. Yet all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shall you change them, and they shall be changed, but you are the same, and your years shall have no end. So once again, let me bring you to this fabric of the universe. You know, like that curtain that supernaturally the prophets had an enlightenment. And I, I don't know if, if God just took one of the prophets out of planet Earth and, and he, he was just able to see the galaxies and the universe and all these things. And I, I think that's what the Lord did. And uh, I don't know if in, if in body or out of the body, but the, the, they saw this. And, and this is, a, a, again, the verse that tells you everything will perish, even the planets, everything. But God's principles will stay the same. Now, let me come right here and let me just go through this. Now, I am also sure that I'm not going to lose my orbit around God. And uh, uh, there's this Bible verse uh, from, from that Paul said that neither death or life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, just tell it out loud. I'm not going to lose orbit. I'm not going to lose orbit. <laughs> So we, we may go a little bit uh, away and we're, we're distant from the Lord and we're closer and uh, then we, there's winter of life, there's summer of life. You know, we all have these moments. But what's really important is we, we don't lose track. And I want to bring you now to the conclusion of this message. So we all need to have what? Purpose. Purpose. So uh, I'm going to put here uh, a crown because purpose has to be with what you should be. When, when you're, in the, when you're uh, uh, doing God's purpose, you're in your kingdom. You're, you're like a king. He called us to be kings and priests. So when you're doing your purpose, you're comfortable. That's your crown. You know, one day uh, we're going to be in the presence of God. And guess what? We're going to deposit our crowns at the feet of Jesus. So that's why there's the crown. So, and then we have passion. And passion comes from where? From what we call the heart. So we have our passion. And in order to achieve our purpose, we need passion. With no passion, you will be lost. With no passion, you will be out of orbit. You will be drifted away. So when we have this passion, you will do any sacrifice in order to achieve your purpose. Let's say you're a young person here and you want to be uh, an astronaut or a pilot. Let's say you want to be a pilot. If you want to be a pilot, you're going to sacrifice anything in order to achieve that. I know because I, I, I went through that. And it's possible for a person to deny himself or herself of many things because they want to achieve that goal. You know, you want to be a doctor. You, and you're in university, and it's boring, and you're bored learning a few of the things. You don't want to learn those, those things, but you know I want to be a doctor. 
So you keep running in your purpose. And you need passion. Then we all have something that's our gifting. We all have gifts. You have gifts? A few. We have a few. And our gifting, it's what gives us also the power to accomplish our purpose. Let, let's say, let me give you an example. Your purpose, purpose is to be a singer. It's not my purpose. I can sing, but some people, that's their purpose. And they have passion. But if they don't have gifts, they don't have the power, they don't have the power to achieve their purpose. Are you following me? So, uh, so your passion is, is the why you do things. So let, let's say it's singing. Why do you sing? Because you have a passion. And the purpose is the, the what you do. So, so what do you do? If you have a passion for singing, what do you do? You sing. And the, the power, it's the how. Or the giftings, it's how you're going to accomplish your purpose. Now, you can apply this to any area of your life. Because uh, many times, as I'm telling you, we're lost. We don't know what to do. It's like when you were in school and you were 16 or 15 and people ask, ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And uh, I want to be rich. <laughs> well, okay, but how, how are you going to be rich? What do you want to do? And, and, and people question themselves. You know, uh, I had all sorts of suggestions and I, I ended up bad because uh, in, in my youth, because uh, I had my parents that wanted me to be a doctor, an engineer, this, that, an architect, and God had something different for me. So I always felt lost, and I spent 10 years, 10 years in university, without ever losing one single year. And I was going from one course to another one and to another one, because I was not following my purpose. I was being suggested, do this, do that. So maybe in life you're doing something that you don't like. And it's time to think about yourself. Now, when you get paid to do your passion, that's awesome. See that little sign over there? So you, when you get paid to do your passion, you never have to work another day in your life. What do I mean by this? It's, it, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work. Let's say your passion is programming, you know, uh, computers and if you get paid to program computers you now let's say your passion is video games and you get paid to test video games that's awesome eh? <laughs> doesn't matter what your passion is your passion is singing and you get paid for singing so when you leave out of your passion you don't have to work on any other day of your life does, does that sound good all right so here you are and now you're confronted, think about your life. And let me just put a little scale here. And uh, those lines, it's like a scale from 1 to 10. So, so let's talk about your giftings. Let's say that your giftings, it's your power. Uh, and uh, let's say you're, uh, you have a gifting for teaching. Let me give you this example. You, 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 you have passion in teaching. And let's say uh, you're being a teacher. So you're, you're on level 10, you're in level 10 uh, of, of your purpose, all right? So, so, so you, you, you're, you're a teacher. How many teachers do you have here, a few? All right. And <laughs> so, so you're a teacher. But let's say you want to teach like I'm teaching here today. But guess what? You're teaching sixth grade math. And, and so, in terms of your passion, you see here this line, from 1 to 10, you're in the level 3. Okay, so you, it, it's, it's your purpose is teaching, but you're out of your realm. You know, what happens, it's that all that area there, it's a wasted destiny. And you, you're just accomplishing something in your life, but 70% of your life, it's frustration. Because you really want to be a teacher, but you're teaching sixth grade math instead of, you know, teaching others. Uh, this is just an example. So what you want to, to, to have, it's a 10-10. 
um, a 1010 purpose. And this is fulfilled destiny. What is, what is a 1010 uh, purpose? It's, it's when you, you're in the center of your purpose and you do it with passion. So you feel good about what you do. You feel great about what you're doing. Are you following me? I, I hope I didn't lose you with this. But this is so crucial. Because if we understand who we are in Christ, if we understand our purpose, and if we have our passion right, then we'll be successful. Now, this is part one of my message. And, and uh, I hope that people that miss it today, they'll be able you know, to pick up some of these concepts. Because we're going to, to do a progression. And I want to help every one of you to find your purpose and your passion. What is your purpose and your passion? And probably if you feel frustrated with life, you're not doing what you should. And forget about money. You know, money will come. But if you have this passion, let's say you have a passion for doing big events. And we have at least two people here that I know, they have passion for this. You want to produce events. You see Cirque du Soleil and you think, wow, this is what I wanted to do. You know, even if I don't do it, I want to do stuff like this. I want, you know, and you have passion for that. Now, if you work as an accountant, well, you're making money, but you feel displaced. It's like you're wasting your talents. You're wasting your time. There's no purpose. And, and do you remember that, you know, that spiral? It's like you're out of track because you don't have any more passion to do what you should be doing. You know, when Jesus called the disciples, he knew Peter was a fisherman. So he, he didn't come to Peter and, and said, you stop, you stop fishing now, and now you're going to be a preacher. No. He said, you're a fisherman, you just don't know that you were created with the purpose of being a fisher of souls. You just don't know it yet. So you, you like fishing, but you're going to be a fisher of souls. Are you following me? So when he called him, he abandoned everything to follow Jesus. But Jesus didn't change his passion. See, we, we were all created with, with a passion, and there's a purpose in our life. And, you know, there's that book, Pur Purpose Driven Life. I don't know if you read that book. It's a yeah. bestseller, awesome book. I really recommend it. But uh, it's kind of an awesome book, but it doesn't give you any clue how to find your purpose. <laughs> I don't know if you've read it. I've read it <clears throat> a few times, and I even did the teachings about it. And it's awesome, you know, makes sense. But doesn't give you any clue, a few clues. How are you going to find your purpose? You pray. That's pretty vague. But there are specific things you and me can do in order to find our purpose. And I, I just want you to live a 10-10 life. To fulfill your destiny. That's why you came here today. Not just to, you know, to listen to a few stories of the Bible. We all can have knowledge of the Bible. But I want just you know, to trigger something in motion. Because I know, and I've seen this, when a group of people finds purpose and passion, that's when God brings a revolution even to a city. Because when you have a group of people doing what they like, what they enjoy doing, being successful in what they do, and they gather together to worship God, you know what happens? It's like a magnet. It's like God's magnet to bring people to His kingdom. I'm passionate for God and His kingdom. Now my passion, I have a passion in life. I have a passion for opening churches. I have that passion. That comes out of, that's my purpose. So I feel really comfortable, and, uh, and I, I don't care, uh, you know, I, I care about having money, you know, to, in order to, to raise my kids and for my family. But I know that if I'm doing my purpose with passion, God will provide for everything I need. So this is just an example. What is your passion? What, what, what drives you in life? And if you feel frustrated, 
it's time to move on. So let us all stand. I want to have a word of prayer. And I pray, God, right now that you reveal yourself to each one of us here in this uh, theater, Lord, and also all of those hundreds of people that are watching this uh, YouTube video. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you will manifest yourself. Oh, God, bring revelation of who you are. And above all, Lord, help us to find our purpose. Help us, Lord. Enlighten our eyes. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Show us, Lord, what we, we're, we're supposed to do in life. Oh, God, and we want to do it with passion. Lord, I pray for all of those here that in the past had an encounter with you, but they've lost the passion. And I pray, God, that you guide us, Lord, to the next step. And as we continue to study your word, Lord, Lord, just like the, the earth spins around the sun and never loses orbit, Lord, we don't want to lose track of you, of, of, your, of, of your life, Lord. You're the life giver. And we want to be with you always. One day, we know that our life will come to an end, but we will be with you forever. And I pray that you will reveal this to any, every person here in Jesus' name. Now let me challenge you with this. You know, during the week we have uh, uh, meetings in homes. You have uh, Marlon and Sandra here. Can you just wave? And if you want to meet us during the week, talk to them. And in the month of July, uh, we're going to have also some special uh, uh, meetings that we, we will be, we'll call them the Deliverance Center. And these meetings, it's where we're going to pray for healing because you know God is a supernatural God. And we've seen God healing people, transforming people. So if you know someone with a problem, either a sickness, an addiction, you may bring them to the Deliverance Center. And we're going to give you more information about this next week. This is my daily bread.